Um, I'm just starting the stream on the Lee Chess page because that gets the stream up and running. Um, I'm actually going to start my Lee Chess instance here the same way that I just started it last stream. I've updated it to use the correct uh, host name. Oh, poo. Really? Really? What kind of issue do we have here? No me. Oh, I'm running in the wrong directory. Okay, that's it. Um, let's do try that again. I was going to say, there's no way I could have broken it. Um, okay, just to verify. Yep, things look all well and good. Um, so, we're going to run that there. Um, sorry that some of the terminals cut off here, uh, but we will get a running Leech Us instance very shortly. In the meantime, enjoy this screen. <laughs> yeah. Am I able to do, like, a split screen showing my terminal and all? Well, no, I'm not, because... Unlike my other screen here, um, my terminal's running under the same Google uh, Chrome browser. It's not a separate application that I can capture separately. Uh, so, okay. Apparently, Leechus wants to do some compilation just because I changed the configuration file. Sure, why not? Do some compilation. See if that bothers me at all. But yeah, no, it's trying to reload this. It'll keep reloading. You know, that's a good question, Railbird. Let's find out. Oh, we got array index out of bounds exception 83. Can you guys see that? This is the kind of stuff that I have to deal with pretty regularly. Uh, let me zoom this in, just so you can see it. Execution exception, array index out of bounds 83. I know that doesn't fit perfectly in the screen, but really, 83? You couldn't have given me like 82 or 84. Okay, what did I mess up? What did I goof? How did I goof this? Um, oh. Are we saying that I'm having some connectivity issues with my Leechus database? I could totally believe that. Um, okay, so Mongo... Help! I don't know anything about Mongo. Show DBs. Oh, we actually have a Lee Chess DB. Use Lee Chess. Show collections. Uh, it's got a cache of... Yeah. Looks like I'm missing a lot of Lee Chess collections. How is it that I was not missing this earlier? How, what sets up all the collections and stuff? Um, okay, print, grab mongo, grab that thing's ending in js. Okay, there's all kinds of scripts here for setting up data. Let's just run them all! What's the worst that could happen? Um, okay... No, but seriously, there's got to be something that sets up the database. It's got to be one or more of these, too. Um, I don't know. I 
Let's take a look at just one of these and see what it looks like. Yep, yep, yep. Fun stuff. Converts stuff to int. Sure. That sounds good. Um, but no, seriously, I am probably missing some things inside my Leechus instance. And I think I follow the directions about how to set everything up. I might have missed a step. I might not. I have no idea. But this was working earlier today, and I actually got as far as registering my username as a LeechS user, and then it went kaput because I had the wrong MongoDB database. And there were so many other things troubled with that environment that I just started over. Um, but now apparently I'm missing some things in... I'm not even sure how I'm going to recover this. Well, okay, start with step one. What version of Mongo am I using? Uh, is it dash dash version? Okay, so we're using Mongo 249. At least in terms of a shell version that's... I don't know if that how that correlates with the actual database version. What version of Mongo do I need? I could have sworn that I got a much more recent Mongo. Like, very recent. Um, Okay, make sure that MongoDB and Nginx are both running. It's a good point. Um, well, MongoDB is running because I got the client to attach. So... Um, okay... There's got to be some way to know what version of MongoDB is running, right? Although I could have sworn I'm using a really recent version. I thought I was using like the one as recent as possible, but... Um, it's going to be embarrassing if I got the wrong one. Um, So we're going to say use leeches, show collections, and yeah, we're missing all the collections in this, um, which is a huge problem. And uh, we're going to ask Google, Mongo create collection. All right, how do we create a collection? Basic syntax is create collection. Okay, now we do our magic here. Grep, create collection. Um, look through all of Lee Chess to see what does this. Okay. That looks most unrealistic. I... there's no way. There's got to be some other way that collections are created in the database. Um... Uh, let's see, is there any way to create other things in JavaScript? Yeah, that looks like more than I was looking for. Um, and this is, these are just JavaScript files. Well, let's look in the bin directory. Okay. 
Um, that's not what I was looking for. Um, I guess I'm gonna look for Leeches, unless I can think of like one of the table names. Let's see, what was one of the table names? It's Tournament 2. Um, so we're gonna look for Tournament 2. Um, and something in all of this must be... Um, yeah, I don't know. Something in all of Leeches must be creating that. Okay, well that didn't tell me very much. I think there's also a table called User 4. Um, but again, what's supposed to create the Leeches database? I'm missing something pretty fundamental here. Uh, I guess I can't just filter for JavaScript. I have to look at what else might be doing this. Um, well, let's look for JavaScripts that touch a user. That's probably more information than we need. Um, okay. Surely something... Something must create the database. Okay. Um, I guess game five is another table. Let's or collection. Let's search for game five. Um, now let's search outside of JavaScript files to see where is game five used. Ah, base.conf defines this thing called game. Um, that's, that's not what I was looking for. Oh, okay, yeah, it is. Let's take a look. Okay. So there's a thing called game collection game. Um, let's search for the word collection. Um, and filter this for just JavaScript things. Okay, we might be getting somewhere here. I'm not sure. I'd like to hope that we are. Um, Collection.drop. Collection.update. Um, that looks like that just builds history. This is another history builder, and there's some game builders and such. Um, Big.js. Still not seeing any JavaScript file that builds a, that defines a collection. Uh, and I'm not sure where else to look. Let's see. All our candidates are these here, which would be a good one. Um, okay. Yeah, might as well check out the documentation, right? OK. 
Okay, there's an image that has a copy, and it looks like the schema. Um, so, how do I get a copy of this schema? Or do I just manually go in the database and make these tables? I mean, I shouldn't have to, but... Um, something creates the collections, or tables, or collections, I guess is the Mongo word for that. Okay. Um, let's see, there's gotta be some way. Like, I don't remember. Do I need to... Yeah, reading documentation? Who does that? Um... I'm not sure what else to go do here. Whatever. I'm not interested in IP tables anyhow. I was just curious. Um, server migration. Yeah, that's not relevant. Hmm. Well, that's what looking through that directory tells us. Um, I'm just going to have to dig really deep until I figure out what it is that constructs those collections. Or, we can approach this the other way. Uh, the other way being, we've got an ex execution exception an array index out of bounds exception of 83. So, we could try to pursue it that way. Um, and I, that might actually be the easier way to pursue this. Which sounds completely insane. Um, but welcome to the world of developing with interesting documentation. Um, so we're going to pursue this wild goose chase here. This array index out of bounds exception of 83. It's got to tell us more than just 83. It's got to mean something. You have to believe and have faith. Um, and while that's going... Uh, while that's all going... make sure that everything gets logged. Okay, refresh. Let's see if we get any output here while uh, Leech just tries to reload in my browser. Look at all these modules boot up. Um, okay. I have no answers for what just happened there. We're gonna register. Oh boy, guys. Hang on one second. As much as I'd love to show you this, I'll show you that the checkmate works here. See it says checkmate? 
So that's pretty cool. Um, one second. Uh, so we'll put this up. Um, exposed a little more than I'd intended to here. So, register. Okay, I got a return value of 83. Um, so, where's this? Uh, let's go back. So, we got this, which isn't what I want to stream at the moment, but it's just enough to. This is this. Yeah, I got the checkmate. But guess what? 83 is back. Uh, is that showing on the stream? Ugh. Don't make me change the capture area. Just trust me, it says 83 there. Okay? It's back there. It's gonna haunt me. Um, Index out of bounds exception, uh, Netty buffer, Lindel Indian heap channel buffer. Um, this might be the easiest way to pursue the issue. I just need to figure out where it is in the code that the 83 is coming from. It's probably a mismatch between one version of software and a different version of software. Uh, Maybe even that I'm using a newer version of Mongo or something. Um, so... Do, 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 do. Okay, well that, that doesn't actually tell much. Oh, so there's some deserialize. So here's how you do this. Say, Google, I've got a problem. Array index out of bounds. Uh, da, da, da. Okay, Google locates um, GitHub, where somebody tries to explain the issue. And I just skim that over. Uh, I should check what version of <laughs> I need to just check what version of MongoDB I'm using. And make sure I'm using an appropriate version of MongoDB with an appropriate version of Reactive Mongo. Uh, but chances are I'm somehow using the wrong MongoDB. That's what this probably means. Um... Uh, So it says MongoDB shell version. Um, MongoDB version. How? Oh, DB dot version is the command. Copy. Moment of truth, guys. There it is. Two four nine. So even though I went through great efforts to use a newer version of MongoDB, I'm still using a dated version. I still need to get the correct version here. That's the deal. That's my problem. It's not that somebody miscoded something on Leech Us. Um, it's that somehow I got the wrong Mongo. Um, So, where is my wrong Mongo? This is the exercise I've been, exercise I've been going through the whole day, basically. Um, so, recipe MongoDB. Uh, yeah, I've been to this link earlier today. Uh, this didn't actually tell me anywhere in the documentation what version of Mongo it got. Um, I think, though, 
I had misinterpreted what this said. Um, so this documentation suggests... Um, where is it suggested? Well, first of all, it doesn't have 2.0.9 here anywhere. But it recommends using this 10 gen Mongo uh, repository package installation and MongoDB monitoring system. And I blew this off as saying, you know, this is the latest formal release that they're recommending using, the latest um, one that's been fully tested. Um, let me check out this repository or take a look at it here. Uh, version. Come on, let me pick a version. Let me pick a version. Current release. 307. So, I had just assumed that because this was not the default, that this is a more dated version and that using this script would actually get me the latest uh, development version. Which it didn't. It got me 209 and I need at least 2114, I think. Um, yeah, it's a scientific wild ass guess. Um, that's how. <sighs> I mean, sometimes there's just so many details that it's better to have an approximation as to what's right or wrong and experiment with it. Like, use a scientific method, make a hypothesis, test it out, and so forth. My initial hypothesis was that I don't need this 10 gen thing. Apparently, this is what I'm supposed to do. Which is kind of silly, because you'd think that if this were the latest version, with respect to their other offering, um, which nowhere in here does it say what it's offering, or a link to any explanation of what it's doing, um, I would just assume that it would use the latest development version. But it doesn't. So, we're going to use the latest release version. Which means if there are newer features, I don't get the benefits of those new features, but at least I'll have something that works. Um, so, I need to go... Uh, where is this? I forget. Okay. Yeah, I need to go into... Um, into my cookbook. And here I need to, rather than saying use MongoDB default, I need to do as this documentation suggests and add recipe MongoDB 10 gen underscore repo. Right? It's, this is the include recipe directive, right? No, this is just recipe, not include recipe. Um, uh, I'm just gonna guess here that include recipe and recipe are interchangeable. It's possible I might be wrong and might get screwed for making that assumption, but none of this is really well documented, unlike tools I'm more familiar with using. Um, so, yeah, this is the methodology I'm being encouraged by other users of this machine to use. This is the methodology I'm going to go with. But documentation could be a lot better. Um, let's see. I think that's fine. I am curious... Yeah, let's, let me take one look at this. Um, okay, yeah, that doesn't really tell me anything. Okay, so I need to back out of the machine. And redeploy Mongo. Which, I think this does pretty effortlessly. 
Uh, so I need to vagrant provision to reprovision the machine. Uh, sorry about that. Provision from the host OS, which redeploys things onto the guest OS so you don't have to manually do administration. It just automatically, automagically gets everything you need and deploys it. Um, I have no idea how that's going to work given that we are swapping in a new database now. Um, hopefully having two databases won't pause, pose a problem. And if it does, well, that's not something I'm... means I'll have to basically delete the machine and start over, or destroy it is their term. Um, so we'll see if we can install this thing and use it instead of the other MongoDB. Um, yeah, it's got to go through all the other steps here to make sure the machine's provisioned correctly. Um, so let me just skim this. Yeah, this uses the latest stable, or what I've called release, what they call stable. Uh, packages. So, um, I'm not sure what else I can conclude at this point other than uh, I think I've got it correctly specified at this point. I've learned that there's a function db version that I can use to check what version we're dealing with. Um, Uh, where's the database installation thing? Does it think it's already done? Okay, so it adds... Ah. Okay, so it adds a Debian source to use that distribution or provider um, for the Mongo database. I don't know how well it's going to upgrade from the already installed Mongo to the new one, but uh, we'll see if it works. And if it doesn't, it just means I need to destroy the machine and start over. Um, so... <laughs> and yeah, unfortunately it goes through all the provisioning steps, including re-downloading or checking that all the source code is downloaded and compiled and so forth for our Leela chess instance. Um, one thing I do mean to understand at some point is how to add a custom service so Leela's always running um, as user Leela. But that's not articulated here and it's not particularly necessary, but it'd be nice to have. Um, Am I missing anything? Nope. So, play a chess game. Um, I don't expect that it's going to finish installing right away, but maybe it will. Create a game. Sure. Whatever. I actually have a pretty high rating. Let's play unrated. so as not to completely mess up the rating pool. Alright, we got an opponent. Here we go. Nobody suspects B3. Okay, let's do the double Fianchetto. Nobody suspects the double Fianchetto because it's not very good. Yeah, I'm bored while waiting for it to compile, so I'm playing a chess game. But realistically, it's probably going to take forever to compile and I should probably just come back later. Uh, I'm not hanging anything, so let's just castle. And I can push that and push this and have some fun. Here we go. Actually, why push this? I could just 
throw all these pawns forward. I don't need to push f4. I already have a space advantage. Yeah, let's just follow. Okay. Yeah, I see how it is. I see it. Okay, now what you gonna do, buddy? Is that really why you want your bishop? Are you sure this is where you want it? Here. I'm just gonna plunk my knight there. Just keep moving the bishop back and forth. Um. Okay. Let's connect my rooks. They defend each other now. Um. I could push f4 now. It actually looks strong. It really opens things up. I hesitate to do it. Um, and I don't need to do it. So, yeah, let's put my queen... I don't know. Why don't I just play knight e3? There we go. Just simple developing moves. Control this square. <laughs> Go full zug. Wow, that's quite the devotion there. I mean, I was impressed by Zug's scale of stream. His attempt to understand an entire language uh, in the span of roughly an hour. That was amazing. Um, and it was appreciated, at least I appreciated it, when he suddenly realized, oh, this is not trivial. This is majorly not trivial. Um... Yeah, so let's see. How's this going? Is it done yet? No, nope, still going. I'll just push all my pawns, you know. Why not? This undermines the center. Hit the square. I'll just keep ramping up the tension. Because why not? What's he gonna do? Okay, take my pawn. Now what? Okay, now what? Is this his plan? I think he just missed that. But it's not like he had... Oh. oh, okay, never mind. Um, he missed that, but I missed something far greater. I got a little bit cocky there. Uh, okay, none of you saw that. We were on the same page there, right? That none of that just happened? Good.
Yeah, I... That probably was a decent pawn sacrifice on my part. Um, if I just recognized that I was sacrificing a pawn, um, rather than try to be super greedy and get it back right away. I am playing like an idiot at the moment. Part of that's just that I'm really tired. So, we're probably going to wrap up after this game. Whatever. Take my material, see if I care. I should probably care. Hey, I got a pawn! Hey, I got another pawn! Alright. Well, that was something else. Um, let's watch other people play. Um, Blitz. Not bullet. Bullet's not worth watching. Um, okay, that's still going. Yeah, so with that, I guess thanks to one and all for watching. We've been preparing to get ready to prepare for starting to get ready to prepare for testing some stockfish development, so... Um, who knows how long this series will go on for. I've tried to cut out the less interesting parts the repeated banging of heads against walls and such. Um, so yeah, thanks for watching, and um, I guess we'll see you next time. Oh, I should evaluate that last game I played. You know, I'm pretty sure Stockfish saw it. Let's find out. And by it... Uh, I'm just pointing out this thing that, you know, I said we all didn't see. I saw it. It's there. So I got a free night, except there's one little detail. Um, it slightly changes the evaluation of that position. And we're going to see just what that looks like on the evaluation graph, just for laughs. Yeah. Honestly, I would have been a lot farther along with this stockfish development and testing. Um, uh, well, mostly just testing. Um, but for lack of an environment to do the testing in, and lack of some sanity in which in development practices, just basically saying, oh yeah, let's just use the latest, most confusing way of doing things. Um, uh, with as many levels of abstraction as possible. It's, it's the recommendation, but it's not one that I would stick with. Um, but I've been kind of forced into it. Alright, so yep, there's my Mist Maiden 1. Yeah, see that spike on the graph? Yeah. So that brings my average sun upon loss up to 65. Even though, overall, I played the game really well. I have that one colossal blunder that just makes the difference. Um, okay, where did this actually go bad? So F6... Yeah, I did hesitate before this rook e c1. Apparently knight g4 was the way to go here. I don't know why. There must be some point. Like, can't he just take that? I take it, he takes it. What's wrong with this? Oh, I have bishop f3 at the end, winning the knight. It's like checkers. 
Um, although bishop f3, then he's got queen h3, but... Okay. Uh, somehow I'm probably still ahead there. Yeah, let's play that out. So if I... If he tries to win this, I take back, he takes... I do this, he goes back, I do this, he goes back here, I hit the queen, his queen goes back. Um, and his knight's still trapped, by the way. Now I hit the knight again. Um, oh, I can't do that here, because he would take my h-pawn. Uh, oh, but that went the bishop. Or we do this in a less complex way. Well, no. No, that's actually best. So because of all that tactic stuff, he goes f5, and fun happens here. But I guess Stockfish is saying I should be attacking this way, not this way. So, yeah. Who knew? Anyhow, thanks for watching. Um... Yeah, no, Stockfish doesn't recommend that because it says that Bishop takes g4 is not recommended, or at least not what Stockfish is looking at. Um, it thinks f5 is better than Bishop takes g4, even though Bishop takes g4 is critical because, I mean, it looks like Black's just winning a pawn for nothing. Um, but no, h4 here uh, dispels all doubt. White's winning. Or he could get all fancy like I did and throw this in first. He's got to defend the knight and then throw this in. He's still defending the knight and you kick the queen and he goes back and then you hit the bishop. But at any rate, yeah, um, because of all this, Stockfish recommends f5 getting the bishop out of the trap. Now, why knight g4? Um, is knight g4 necessary to play this? I guess so. I mean, knight g4 has got to have some subtle tactical purpose somehow. I was thinking, like, knight g4 intends, I don't know, knight f2 or something. Um, there must be a reason for it. It's not obvious, but anyway. Yep, yeah, thanks for watching, and we'll see you around.